And joining me in studio now is PK Basu, Chief Strategist at RealEconomics.com. So PK, uh, always great to have you with us in studio. So let's look at median here. household income. Uh, grew in 2013. Is this a reflection Singapore economy is doing well? Yes, the Singapore economy picked up a lot of momentum in the second half of the year. Uh, and that contributed to improved incomes for uh, the average and the median household. Uh, so uh, that, that uh, is, is certainly good news, and I think the momentum is continuing into the early part of this year. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to see good growth in incomes, in, especially, I think, in the first half of 2014. Okay, let's look at inflation. The real income growth taking into account inflation is 1.6%. Uh, so should we see this as income growth keeping up with inflation? Is that something we should still be concerned about in 2014? Uh, well, inflation has eased off quite significantly in the second half of last year. Uh, and so we now have a more normal inflation scenario in Singapore, uh, the sort that we've been used to uh, over, the mo over most of the last 20 years. Uh, we had an unusual period of much higher inflation for about three years. Uh, that has eased off. And so I think we'll begin to see the real income numbers improve quite a bit uh, this year. So some interesting stats coming out of this report today showed that income per household member for the top 10% earners dropped 5.2%. So what are you reading into that? What are the reasons? Well, I think there are two aspects to this. Uh, first, uh, we've, we've seen uh, aggressive measures to try and uh, bring property prices under some control. Uh, and so uh, capital gains are a significant contributor to, uh, uh, to, to the top households' uh, incomes. Uh, with, with the controls and, and attempts at bringing uh, property, uh, property prices mm -hmm. under some control, uh, the top end is seeing less growth. Uh, that, I think, helps uh, towards uh, improving the Gini coefficient. Okay. We've seen a significant improvement in the Gini coefficient. There are two aspects. The other side of it is the bottom two deciles of the population, and actually the bottom three deciles, have seen substantial income transfers mm -hmm. in the last two budgets. Uh, and we're seeing some of that contributing to uh, improving the distribution of income uh, across Singapore households. So uh, both at the top end and at the bottom, there's, a, there's an improvement. We are seeing globally, of course, uh, that inequality of incomes and wealth have increased quite dramatically over the past decade. Uh, we're seeing that in the US. We're seeing it globally in China and India as well. So. Uh, the fact that Singapore has managed to keep inequality under some control and, and, and improve the, uh, the Gini coefficient uh, over the past couple of years is, is actually quite an achievement. Okay, so how would you say we compare regionally then in terms of Gini coefficient? Well, uh, the Gini coefficient is highest in Hong Kong, uh, in, in Asia. Singapore is pretty, pretty high up there. Um, but uh, the fact that it's improving now is, is good news. Uh, there have been very active measures taken in the last two or three years to reduce inequality, uh, and that's beginning to pay off. So in terms of reducing inequality, is it always all about addressing it through relief and taxes? Uh, well, that's the easiest way to deal with it. Uh, there are, of course, other, uh, uh, other means of redistribution, mm -hmm. but using the tax system is uh, the simplest way, uh, the least intrusive way uh, of dealing with it without uh, having too much of an impact on the play of market forces, which is really quite important uh, to, uh, to Singapore's approach to managing the economy. Okay, so PK, one last question. Back to median household income. Uh, the numbers today show that over the last five years, that number rose by 11%. So do you see that trend continuing uh, this year and maybe for the next five, ten years as well? Well, actually, 11% over five years is, is a very moderate pace of growth in household income. Uh, I think that that was a difficult period for the global economy. You had the global financial crisis in 2008. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the impact of that continued in 2009. So this, the, this, the last five years have been a pretty difficult period. Uh, I think we're now beginning to pull out of it. Uh, Singapore, in particular, is seeing a nice cyclical recovery. Uh, over the last six months. That will gather momentum over the next six months. So I think um, we should see faster growth in household incomes than the sort of pace we've seen on average in the past five years. All right. Thank you very much for coming in. It's a pleasure speaking to you. Good to be here. And that was PK Basu on numbers out today indicating a narrowing of income inequality in Singapore and, of course, higher median household incomes.